everybody. Uh, thanks for sticking around. I know this is the brief you've all been waiting for, the uh, last one of the day. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Gary Pennett. He's the Director for Agency Operations, the Missile Defense Agency. Uh, he'll uh, take remarks and uh, then uh, we'll have about uh, 10, 15 minutes for uh, questions. Uh, if you do have questions, I'd ask you to uh, limit to one and a follow-up and uh, please introduce yourself. And with that, uh, Mr. Pennett, please take Good afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity to brief you today on the President's request for the Missile Defense Agency's 2018 budget. The agency requests $7.9 billion in FY 2018 to continue the development of reliable, increasingly capable, and state-of-the-art defenses for our nation, deployed forces, allies, and international partners against ballistic missile threats. The fiscal year 2018 Missile Defense Program will support the development, testing, deployment and integration of interceptors, sensors, and the command control battle management communication system for the Ballistic Missile Defense System, or BMDS. Our priority in this budget remains the delivery of greater missile defense capability and capacity for the warfighter, which includes investment in advanced technology and future capabilities. Next chart. MDA remains committed to delivering, expanding, and sustaining our nation's homeland missile defenses and requests $1.5 billion in FY 2018 for the Ground-Based Mid-Course Defense Program, or GMD. Today, we have in place 36 ground-based interceptors and are on, on track to expand the fleet to 44 by the end of this year. This budget also funds flight and system ground testing of our homeland defenses, continues redesigned kill vehicle development, enhances the stockpile reliability program and expands the GBI battle space. We will continue developing GMD ground system hardware and software upgrades and fire control and kill vehicle software development to improve discrimination capabilities, which is the ability to differentiate between lethal and non-lethal objects. For the long range discrimination radar, we request 358 million in FY18 to complete the design, purchase critical antenna components, and initiate qualification and subsystem testing. This radar, which we pro will project will be available in 2020, is a critical mid-course sensor that will improve BMDS target discrimination capability while supporting a more efficient use of the GMD interceptors. MDA requests 131 million for the C-Base X-Band, or SBX radar, which provides precision mid-course tracking and discrimination capabilities and participates in flight tests. Responding to the request by U.S. Pacific Command and Northern Command, the FY18 program includes funds to extend the on-station time from 120 days at sea to 330 days in order to extend, expand contingency operations for defense of the homeland. This budget request includes $28 million for the refurbishment of the Cobra Dane radar and initiate radar life extension. The sensor's analysis of alternatives conducted by the department found that a next near-term critical step to optimizing tracking and discrimination capabilities in the Pacific is to deploy a radar in the Pacific. MDA plans $5 million for an Atlantic radar study to assess the feasibility of appropriate tracking and discrimination sensor capabilities to support the defense of the United States against emerging long-range ballistic missile threats from Iran. Finally, we are requesting $21 million in FY 2018 for the Enhanced Homeland Defense Radar Hawaii to conduct source selection activities. We plan for the delivery of an initial capability of this radar by 2023. Next chart. Moving now to regional defenses, the FY18 request for Aegis BMD is $1.7 billion, which includes sustaining the deployed standard missile 3 fleet. MDA will procure 34 SM3 Block 1B missiles for deployment on land at the Aegis Ashore site in Romania and later in Poland and at sea on Aegis BMD ships along with associated hardware and support costs. This will bring the total number of SM3 Block 1B missiles procured to 287 missiles by the end of 2018. MDA will also procure six SM3 2A rounds, which will support developmental and operational testing and our commitments under the European Phase Adaptive Approach, or EPAA. Beginning in FY18, MDA will commence upgrades on the SM3 Block 1B hardware and software. The President's budget request for the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, is $797 million. This will allow us to support the maintenance and upkeep of all BMDS unique items of the fielded THAAD batteries as well as for all THAAD training devices. In FY18, MDA will support seven THAAD batteries. This budget procures 34 THAAD interceptors in FY18, bringing the total to 349 by the end of FY18. 
Further, MDA will continue development of THAAD software upgrades to engage SRBMs, MRBMs, and limited IRBMs, that's short range, medium range, and intermediate range ballistic missile threats, and the integration of THAAD into the Army's integrated air and missile defense battle command system planning process. MDA requests a total of $524 million to support the entire MDA radar fleet, which includes support for the Cobra Dane, upgraded early warning radars, or UEWRs, and 12 ANTPY-2 radars, which include four base mode radars in Japan, Turkey, Israel, and the U.S. Central Command. This budget supports the development of algorithms to give these radars an improved ability to discriminate between lethal and non-lethal objects. We will also transition to the production of the next generation gallium nitride transmit receive integrated multi-channel modules to improve ANTPY2 radar performance. Our budget request of 147 million in FY18 for Israeli programs continues MDA's long-standing support of U.S. Israeli cooperative BMD programs to include procurement of Iron Dome and the co-development of David Sling weapon system upper tier interceptor and the Arrow weapon system improvements. EPA phase three is scheduled to be delivered by the end of calendar year 2018. MDA requests a total of 90 million for Aegis Ashore and polling. Phase three will also consist of an upgraded version of the Aegis BMDS weapon system with a new SM3 variant, the Block 2A. Next chart. MDA is developing advanced BMD technology for integration into the BMDS fleet to defeat future threats. The investment strategy for these technologies balances the need to address the most dangerous current threats with the need to position the U.S. to respond to threats developing in the future. MDA is requesting $259 million for the Multi-Object Kill Vehicle, or MOKV. For FY18, MDA has accelerated MOKV risk redu reduction and product development phases to achieve a demonstrated capability in the 2025 timeframe. We are requesting 75 million for hypersonic defense. The FY17 NDAA directed for a program to be established in FY18. The FY18 plan will begin the software modifications to current BMDS assets and define requirements and architecture for future demonstrations. The directed energy request is 54 million, which will allow MDA to continue the development and scaling of a low power laser demonstrator. Additionally, MDA requests 52 million for MDA space efforts and FY18. This will fund space tracking and surveillance system or STSS satellite operations and sustainment. STSS consists of two satellites operating in low Earth orbit and provides risk reduction data for a potential operational BMDS tracking and surveillance constellation. This FY18 request will also complete on-orbit deployment of the space-based kill assessment sensor network. Next chart. We request $430 million in FY18 for command control battle management and communications, or C2BMC. C2BMC Spiral 8.2-1 allows C2BMC to integrate data from multiple ANTPY2 radars SBX, UEWRs, Cobra Dane, and the BMDS Overhead Persistent Infrared, or OPIR, architecture, and becomes operational in FY18 in support of enhanced homeland defense. We will complete testing and deployment of C2BMC Spiral 8.2-3 in support of Aegis BMD Engage on Remote Functionality and EPAA Phase 3, and we will continue development of C2BMC Spiral 8.2-5 to support integration of long-range discrimination radar into the ballistic missile defense system by 2021 to support a robust homeland defense capability. We are requesting $410 million in FY18 for the targets program and $306 million to conduct 23 ground tests and 12 flight tests, including critical operational flight tests, one of which will involve a demonstration of the EPAA Phase 3 architecture against IRBMs. Next chart. In summary, this budget request helps MDA maintain its commitments to the warfighter and to the nation to push forward with improvements to both homeland and regional defenses. I'll now take a few questions. Hi, Jeff Lines from James. Hi, doing, Jeff. Talk a little bit through this uh, plant, the, the, the proposed radar for, uh, for Hawaii. Is 
exactly? Do you have a requirement for that yet? Uh, how, how's that being laid out? So we work with the uh, combatant commanders and they identified the need for ad additional sensor coverage to enhance the defense of Hawaii. Uh, let me be clear that Hawaii is defended now with the current system, but as we see the threat continue to grow, uh, they identified the need for an additional sensor on the Hawaiian Islands, and so we're working with them on that requirement. And we will have, as I said, we have 21 million requested in FY18 uh, to begin the uh, requests for information from contractors and begin studies in terms of the details of that radar. So there's no plan yet, like going with the radar, but for example, another LRDR or, or ANTPY2 or anything like that? Uh, so the ANTPY2, the study that we did determined that ANTPY2 is not uh, a sufficient radar for that need. So this will probably be a radar, again, we have to do the study, but it will probably be not quite the scale of an LRDR, but definitely something more than an ANTPY2. Thank you. Back there. Yeah, hi, uh, James Drew from Aviation Week. Um, with the uh, hypersonic defense plan, uh, Russia and China have demonstrated these capabilities many years ago, why, why did it take uh, so long for MDA to respond and, and start this program? Uh, we are, we have been looking at that threat vector uh, for some time, just the generic threat vector. And so, uh, and this was just NDA language that told us to start a program, but we have been doing studies uh, in that area for a while. Okay. And also, um, why is, why is uh, Iran now featured fairly prominently in your, uh, in your budget request? Um, is it a new threat that you expect to be operational soon or something like that? No, that uh, Iran has always been part of our original charter. Uh, both North Korea and Iran have been part of the Missile Defense Agency's charter. Let's take it back there first. Sir, uh, Sidney Friedberg, Breaking Defense. Uh, the uh, direct energy part is a relatively small, small piece of the budget, but it's got a lot of excitement, interest around it. What is the actual program there? You hear things about a, a long endurance high altitude uh, UAV uh, being as sort of the end state, but that's clearly not what you're buying now. That's some, you're buying things that are more as a testing step towards that. So. Yeah, so our low power laser demonstrator is in fact a stepping stone to that. So one of the things is uh, looking at the, uh, the platform, which we would not develop, we would uh, either uh, lease or, or tr have a a platform that we would use for testing, and but our focus is actually on the laser itself, uh, scaling the laser up in power, reducing the size and making it more efficient so that it could be on an airborne platform. But that's all we're doing right now is, is just the demonstration of that is correct. Yes. I want to use it in the budget for the lead system integration transition plan. And what, what is the thinking right now in terms of Boeing's contract it expires at the end of 18, you guys say signal the industry, you want to bring that in-house. What's the thinking right now and how much money is in, in the budget to, uh, for that plan? Uh, I, I don't know offhand. I'll have to get back to you on the exact numbers for the uh, transition. And, and the, the Boeing, let me be clear, the Boeing contract is not going away at the end of FY18. It continues uh, pretty much through the fight up. Oh, I thought you were looking to transition it in-house. There are, there are portions of that effort that we're looking at a lead system integrator that is bringing, bringing the entire system together. And so we're looking at competing that portion of the effort. Okay, it's hypersonic, that's actually a new program. What systems are you going to be upgrading with new software algorithms to counter potential threats? I mean, SM6, uh, which systems? We're, we're looking at that. That's part of what our study is, look at what those, what, uh, what the uh, capabilities are that those systems may have, and if there are some software that we can put into that. And, and I'm sorry to get back to your hyper to your uh, question about the uh, lead system integrator. I believe we have. Uh, and I'll have to get the exact number for you, but it's about 37 million starting in FY18. There's about to begin a transition or to modify th that arrangement to, to to do the competition for that. Yes, to comp to compete with compete the lead lead system integrator part only. Boeing will still uh, be prominent in the effort, but in, in, the, in the ballistic missile program, but just the lead system integrator portion of that. That would be open to a competition? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I need to yes. Hi, Jen Judson with Defense News. I wanted to ask about the Atlantic radar study that you mentioned. Yes, sir. Um, can you elaborate a little on what you're looking at? Is it location, type of radar? Um, have you ruled anything out um, at this point in terms of the type of radar that you're looking no, for? No, we haven't. And this is, again, this is a study and part of the ballistic missile defense review 
uh, which is ongoing now, will uh, inform that uh, that the results of that as well. Um, with, with the uh, Atlantic radar, uh, will how exactly where exactly are you thinking about putting this, uh, and, and is this a new requirement that has come up just recently? Again, this is just a study we're doing, and the Ballistic Missile Defense Review will inform uh, the decisions on that. And also, you had a big intercept test for the ground-based interceptor that was due to come up fairly shortly, which would in, in, uh, inform some budgetary decisions. Uh, do, you, do you know if that intercept test is due to happen um, soon or when that, that's expected to happen? We're, we're coordinating the resources associated with that test, and when those resources are available, we will... We will conduct that test. Uh, you have a joint de uh, development program for the Aegis SM3 Block 2A That's right. with Japan. That's right. And I noticed the funds are going dramatically down and then seem to be phased out. Is it just the natural end of the program? Or yes, yes, we're completing the co cooperative program with Japan and FY18, I believe, is the last funding, about $60 million for that. Uh, that missile is going into production, and we're starting to produce that, and Japan will be buying some of those rounds as well. Thank you. Okay, Tony. SPX expanding it to 330 days out of the year. Was, was that a, a recent urgent requirement from PACOM in response to the North Korea threat? With it's a, combina a combination. Uh, we have uh, we had originally budgeted for 120 days, and in the last few years we have been operating at closer to 200 to 220 days. So we're just recognizing that uh, we need to put that in the budget to be more realistic about the. So it's not something that just like two months ago they said we need no. this out this evening. No, no. So I had uh, one more thing. Um, the Aegis Ashore sites that you have uh, in Romania and Poland. Um, it says in here that you'll initiate an Aegis Ashore uh, s uh, study. Uh, is that related to potential expansion of, of that capability to other nations? Uh, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, uh, we, have, we do have this, the site in Romania, which is operational. The site in Poland will become operational by the end of calendar year 2018, which is uh, part of the EPAA phase, phase three. Uh, there are there are there are ongoing uh, discussions uh, regarding Aegis Ashore applications uh, and other things, which again is also part of the BMDR that's going on. And as you see here, I think it's related more to um, uh, protection of those sites. Uh, so I think I might have had that one that wrong there. I, I see. I see. Okay, that could be. Okay. Uh, I wanted to ask an overarching question, sort of, the, this budget comes in advance of the Ballistic Missile Defense Review, um, so I'm wondering how much of this could be sort of considered a placeholder before the changes are afoot, um, you know, were there certain areas where it was a struggle to figure out, you know, whether to invest further um, before, you know, you have some direction from a review? Um, just, just curious um, how you work out a budget just in advance of all this, because changes could be imminent. Well, there's nothing that we did that would uh, preclude moving forward. For example, the Atlantic radar study, recognizing that that may be something that the BMDR may may suggest, and so uh, so we recognize that, uh, and and th those other types of investments. So we try not to to preclude anything in advance of that, and. And we did that with the thought in mind that the BMDR would uh, potentially inform us as we go forward, and so we're we're prepared for that. Okay. Tony. The, the move from 36 to 44 interceptors by September 30th. That, is that the plan? No, no, it's the calendar year 2017. 44 by the end of this 2017 okay. calendar year. Yes. How much is that contingent on a success in this next GBI test? If that fails, would that derail the uh, the movement to 44 temporarily? No, no. We would continue. We are continuing to produce those rounds. Those rounds are essentially, for all intents and purposes, are essentially almost done. We're really in the process of emplacing those rounds. Okay. These are the CE2s, two A's. The C the CE2s, right? The most advanced version. Yes. Yes. 
On your, your schedule, you talked about having a second GBI test, budgeting for a second GBI test. Would that be fiscal 18? Yes, yeah. right. That'd be 18. So you would right. do two tests in 18, possibly? Uh, no, not right now. Right now, we have one planned in 18. Just one planned in 18. FTG 11. Okay. The one come up is FTG 11. 15. 15. Okay, 15 comes before 11. Go ahead. GBI math. I'm just <laughs> Okay. All right. Any more questions? Okay. Uh, how, how much have you brought forward the multi-object kill vehicle? It said that it's been accelerated slightly um, for introduction 2025. What, what is that relative to what, where it was previously? So we were looking more at the 2030 time frame, and so this additional funding uh, increase will bring it to the 2025 time frame. So about about five years, roughly. Okay. Hey, can I ask you about the Israeli? The Israeli Cooperative Program. Every year, you guys come in with about 150 million dollars. 147 this year, yes. Okay. It's expanded like to 500 million by Congress. Where does that money come from? Is that money that comes from other agencies into MDA, or do you have to shift MDA money resources to pay for that gift? That is that those funds are appropriated by Congress, so they're the ones that we we request. As I said this year, we're requesting 147. And so Congress determines how that gets financed. But if they add like three or four hundred million, does that come out of MDA in terms of you have to shift dollars around? We, we don't. We don't do that. Congress makes all those decisions in terms of how money. So I can't tell you where the money comes from. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you.